Okay, so let's try this problem. It says fo follow the flow of electrons indicated by the curved arrows in the following reaction and write the products that result. Okay, so does everybody have a um, solution that they feel comfortable with in this one? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you good with that? Okay. So I want you to look at what I do and see where your problems are lying, okay? So, um, what was your first question? Didn't you have a question about the arrows? Yes, right? I was wondering um, if the head of the arrow is what's going to be that it's been like taking. I always imagine that like a hand like taking. Yeah, so that's, I always say it's like Inspector Gadget, if you remember okay. that. For like for me, that was when I was growing up, there was this cartoon, Inspector Gadget, where he would go grab, shoot his arm and grab something and pull it back. That's like an acid base reaction. In fact, that's what's happening here is these electrons are like Inspector Gadget arm. They're going and grabbing that hydrogen and pulling it back, okay? In fact, that's what you want to always think of the arrows as doing, okay? Is that the butt of the arrow is at the, like if you imagine that it's Inspector Gadget analogy, where his hand starts at. And the head of the arrow is where it's going to, okay? And that arrow shows the bond that's being formed. Okay, that's what the arrow is showing. And this arrow, do you see what's happening here? This arrow is showing from these electrons here in this bond, they're going to in between these two atoms here, okay? And this one's showing a similar thing kind of to this one here where these electrons here are actually going to that oxygen atom there, okay? so. If we see what's going on here, right, we should be, from our analogy, thinking we're forming a bond between there, we're breaking a bond between those two, we're forming a bond in between those two, and we're breaking a bond in between those two, okay? So let's, and then we gotta also remember our formal charges, okay, afterwards. So what I prefer to do on all of these problems um, is to put in my lone pairs if they're not there, okay? So I put the lone pairs, and that's just for my own electron accounting, okay? So what do we say? We're making a bond there, so we're gonna have everything else just leave the same, right? So H2O, we've made that there. This oxygen had the two lone pairs. And what happened? This bond went in between there, right? You see that? This bond that was in between here is now in between here. So we have that, okay? And this bond that was in between the carbon and oxygen, what has it done? It's put its electrons to the oxygen, right? So that's the answer. That's so close. So did you forget your formal charge there? Yes, I did. Uh huh. So that's oftentimes the problem. Okay. This is my problem. Yeah. So that's essentially it. It's you didn't put your formal charge. The other thing is, is it looks weird, and I know they didn't have the two lone pairs of electrons, but the way we're used to it, right, that looks weird, right? So that's why I was saying, put in all your electrons, it'll make it easier. And from here you'll see, because the reason you only had those two electrons is because you were only thinking these electrons here, right? And that doesn't help you with your accounting, where you can count your valence of oxygen and then can figure out your formal charge. That's why I would always say, put your electrons in, then you'll be able to figure out your formal charge. But I was so close. Yeah, you're pretty close, yeah. But the, the formal charge will make the homework tell you it's wrong, yes. you know? Uh -huh. Questions on this one? No, I, I think my problem was I thought you were supposed to put it all together. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Okay, are we good? Can we kill it? Okay.